Hey guys, welcome to this episode of painting our concrete driveway. Now you can see that there is a mammoth area that we need to paint. And yes, we recently had our concrete done, but unfortunately the finish was not 100%. And you can see there are loads of marks here, tire marks. So we're hoping that this paint is gonna cover it. Otherwise, if it doesn't, well, we're simply just gonna to have to find another solution. And we've never done this before. So we're taking us with you, taking you with us on the journey. And it's gonna be a fun journey of that. Now let's have a look at what we've got on our table. Hmm. All right, so we got a lot of burger products. And did you know that burger is actually deluxe? What? Boom, shakalaka. So we got cleaning, we got etching, we got gripping, and we got the good stuff. Ugh, the painting. Yes. Now, you can actually mix any color in this paint. We thought it was just the standard ones that you allow, but we got white and we mixed it in. So we're getting tassel gray. Silver tassel. Sil silver tassel over here. So first thing I need to do is... I need to just pressure wash the situation because we want to get rid of all the dirt and then we're going to clean it and then we're going to etch it to make the new paint stick on the fresh concrete better and then we're going to mix in some true grit because you were reading the forums and you discovered yes. I heard that the gloss Berger paint actually is very slippery. As soon as it has an ounce of water or rain on it, you can slip up and people have actually Someone broken there. ended up yeah. in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they must have got a good payout or next we're just going to be using this. We've got our gloves, we're ready. So let's uh, pressure, wash pressure wash this beautiful oversized. <laughs> We're gonna have to do this in two two sections, yeah. two sections, because you need to let this paint wait for seven days before driving on it. Yeah. And we need to use our driveway. We do. Let's just do it. Let's do it. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You Good. ready? No, I'm not ready. Get your PPE on. So I've got the big boy, the Karcher K7 over here super strong and I'm gonna start maybe from here because the water runs down that way I'm gonna do pretty much all this area I'm not gonna paint this block I'll do that in the second go next week but for now I'll just do this I'll put it on it's got several settings this guy I'm gonna just put it on level one for now just to see how strong it is and I'll go in and try clean up as, as much as possible one cool tip you can do is if you are concerned with weeds growing through here you can actually use this to slice the weeds of course they're gonna grow back stronger but uh, we're going to be putting some protection in later, very soon. But let's just clean it up for now and get it going. Gotta say, this, even on the weakest setting, is strong enough to break up the old paint from this concrete, which is probably a good thing because we want to get rid of it. So I might even go full strength for this guy. I am the destroyer of weeds. Whilst Ash is busy pressure washing, I'm going to take this time to clean up those nooks and crannies that we can't get into. So over here we've got the garage door and here there is a divot and there's plenty of sand and dust here. So I'm just using a small dustpan and brush to get into those nooks and crannies, get rid of that so that when we do come to painting over the area, it's nice and fresh and nothing will stick to the paint because we want it to attach to the floor. So I washed the driveway and we also put a little bit of mortar in just to make the pattern a little less noticeable. <laughs> It's actually, it's good because it does make it like less bumpy, which is nice, isn't and it? That'll be perfect because you're going to go from less bumpy to bumpy. So it's a nice transition, I think. That's going to be good then. So this is active clean. You use this before you paint and it's meant to clean it, make it fully, fully perfect so the paint doesn't crisp off. There's two ways to use it. One is heavy duty way, which you just use it as is. And there's a general purpose way, which is the way I'm going to be doing it because I pressure washed the floor and it looks pretty clean. And that is you mix one part of this and four parts water. So before you play with this guy, make sure you have proper gloves on, proper protection, and even a mask, because this can burn your lungs out. So I heard. So I'm gonna fill out one liter and the rest of water. Before you start guys, make sure you wet the area that you're about to clean with some water, because the application goes on a lot easier. Now that 
we have cleaned it. Ooh, looking gorgeous, I think. Actually, it looks the same to me, except just a bit wet. But hopefully, we've done something. Ooh, it's fun wearing masks. Again, wear your mask again, because now we're going to be etching the new concrete. The old concrete, apparently, you're not meant to etch it. It's only if you're painting over new surfaces. So if you've already got paint there, you don't need to do this. So what I'm going to do, because I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to mix half of it, and it says use five liters per one kg of this. So if I'm using half kg of this, I need two and a half liters of water. Let's go. One, two and a half. It's like a protein shake. Who wants a protein shake? Brief up. Burger. Burger. It looks a bit like uh, Epsom salts, if you've ever seen that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go for half. And then mix it with the broom and have a bit of a broom. Except instead of waiting for 15 minutes, which is active clean, this one, you only wait five. You're going to have to do this fast. The genius plan. Rather than brushing it in from scratch, I'm just going to pour it. That way I just brush the poured area. Thinking. So I got here, this is a 12 millimeter nap roller, so it should get into the nooks and crannies. And I've also just got a standard 50 millimeter control and precision brush. Full starting show by about 20 minutes. It's advised to soak the roller that you're going to be using and the brush in water. So I'm going to do that now before starting. Now I'm just going to go around all of the edges and mask tape it up. All of the bits I don't want painted. Yeah. All right, guys, hopefully the hardest part is done. I've prepped the whole area. So I've put masking tape around everything, the gate motor, the posts, the edges, the front where the asphalt is. So I'm ready to start mixing the paint. And I've also pre-washed pre the brushes and the roller I'm gonna use. So I'm ready to start mixing the paint. Apparently you just use the whole tub into the 10 liter packet. However, I've heard that maybe you need to empty some of the, the paint out because it might be too full. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Got my mask, put it on, and let's go. Right, just finished the whole set. Found this stuff is, you needed to brush several times to get it in there. And for the stamp bit, it's looking all right. Just really had to get in to the stamping bits. Hopefully on the second coat, it looked good. A couple of issues I had was, well, I, as soon as I, this, this stuff is very sticky. So if you look over here, lots of grass and leaves pretty much straight away went over the paint. Hopefully it will wash off tomorrow for the second coat. Also, the paint I selected looks a lot whiter than I thought it'd be. It's just uh, <laughs> very, very bright and white. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. Hopefully it will dry a bit darker, but if it's really, really white, then uh, maybe I'll have to coat it with a different color. We'll see how it looks like eventually. But yeah, 
but it does the stamp bit does look very beautiful especially like the bit that we filmed on over there but really we've got to do the second coat to see how it really looks like it took a long time to do it but uh pretty much there's just some things aren't out of your control and you just have to do it because like all of that it's just a mess and a driveway is just full of stuff so just gonna finish up for today because we're out of sunlight and then tomorrow i'll hit it with the second coat and then go for the remainder if we're happy with how it dries one thing that really slowed me down was the extension pole that i had snapped i think it was a really old one so probably next time carry spares and also don't wear shades that you like because i got paint all over it so uh yeah things to know for next time all right it's a new day and i've got myself a different paint color this time this pretty much just dried up it's blue it didn't look blue in the shop but on the floor it looks blue don't know what happened there i think maybe it had too much yellow lighting which made it not look blue in the shop or the shop just had the wrong sample so i went back and i got this color instead it looks like maybe a slightly darker tone of gray than that's already on the, the crocodile more than what i was looking for i did also look online and i found that all the grays that they had in their palette actually were predominantly blue i guess it's just to mixing with the yellow of the sun to make it look i don't know what's going on but pretty much i got a new color now because this color is horrendous and i'm going to go back to it what i did though just to start the show is I actually use a little bit more mortar in these areas here just to smooth it out a little bit just to hide some of the concrete defects that were already there so i smoothed this out so hopefully hopefully it will look good now when i paint over it rather than having those little defects that was there before so i'll go ahead and mix in some true grit into the gray and just get back to it and if i notice any bits that need like any grass because there's a lot of grass in it before if i notice any defects i'll just scrape it away before i paint i also have here a little 50 millimeter brush found that useful the other day i got a fresh one just to not contaminate the colors and this time i'm using a 20 millimeter nap roller the 12 mil that i used yesterday was just a nightmare to use in all the videos i've seen you were able to do like an n pattern but i couldn't really get much to stick on it with using less so i'm gonna try 20 seeing how that goes all right let's mix the paint and let's go Alright, so it's been officially two weeks since we laid the last bit of paint on the driveway. It's looking bright, it's looking gorgeous. It's actually a different colour than you last saw it because we went through some changes. I'll go through all of the issues right at the end, but it's the two-week Escabay test. So I'm going to be giving you the keys yes. to the car. I want you to drive with your tyres previously. Oh there used to be tyre stain city on the original concrete. I just want to see, I'm expecting tyre, you know, tyre marks. Oh, no. I just want to see how easy it would be to wash off the tire marks and if the paint will stay on the ground mm -hmm. after the car's been driven over it. It says you're meant to leave it for one week. I gave it two weeks for good measure because in all their product sheets, it says that you'd have humidity of 50%. So I'm like, we're never going to get that in this no, country. Never. But you ready? I'm let's, so ready, but I'm also really nervous. 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 Don't worry, there's, there's, there's footprints and stuff like that already. Just break it up. We'll fix it. You sure? And then we'll go through all of the issues and all of the tips on how to make it easy. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> no tire marks so far the paint is still looks good oh my gosh that noise a squeaky noise just made me feel so nervous i don't even want to look behind me what have i done <laughs> what have i done There's some good news i can't see any tire marks oh wow but what you know it's a very clean car so uh, <laughs> maybe we need to do some proper damage 
to see how it reacts. But it looks like it's good. I mean, do you like it? Yeah, it looks clean. I can't see anything. Like, I'm literally looking really hard to find some sort of dirt. Maybe there's something here. I think what it is, maybe some of the paint somewhere needed a bit more time to cure. And it looks like the car on the tires grabbed some of the uncured paint and just deposited it here. So if you look here, you can actually just like flick these bits away. This is just a, a deposit of paint. Yo, just an update. It's been about a week or so since we started driving the big beast in. And let me just show you the driveway. And as you can see here, it is still looking good. The parts that did come off, there was brush marks here. I just used a little paintbrush and just dabbed it over and it's disappeared. And it doesn't seem to be chipping anymore. As a side note, there used to be defects on the actual concrete finish and it does seem to have gone away. Remember the little potholes that was there from the damaged concrete, but that's also gone. So definitely good using a bit of mortar to clean it up. And the paint also seemed to have hid those pothole marks. So the driving test seems to work well. Obviously this car is too clean, so maybe when it gets dirty, but the paint didn't peel off. But there is some defects. If you look over here, there's lots of bits of yellow marks. Now this is actually coming from these leaves. When they decompose, it just makes that yellow disappear. But if you just rub it, I'm just doing it with my foot, the yellow just begins to disappear. So just a bit of bit of water and a bit of rubbing, maybe with a broom or something like that, it does go away. So it's not, maybe if I tackle it early, I've left it there for like a week or so. So maybe if I tackle it early, it can be easily to get rid of. But yeah, it's just the color that you pick makes a big difference. Now, speaking of colors, some tips for you. Before buying the paint, invest in some, these are just some test, test colors and actually check out how the color is like when you draw it on a bit of wood and put it on the floor because I noticed because this paint is so glossy the color that I ordered was, was gray originally light gray but that turned out looking like light blue and then I ordered a darker gray and that ended up looking purple so I think what it is is the blue skies the yellow from the sun it affects the actual color of the paint so we ended up with this light one because we had no idea what we were doing. We tried all these different colors that kept on coming out like green and brown and blue. So we just ended up with this one. It's a bit lighter than I would have liked because um, when we um, are normally walking up and down, there is a bit of foot marks here, but you can, like I said, just rub it off and it just disappears with a little bit of minor scrubbing. Great things that I loved is that we used the mortar to fill up some of this etching. So regarding the stamp pattern, it kind of, I feel like it blends in between the, the new concrete and the old concrete. And the stamp, I gotta say, it looks gorgeous with paint on. Before this was a disgusting, hideous piece of mess. But with the paint, it now just looks gorgeous. And speaking of which, regarding tips on painting, like originally for painting this, I was using a paintbrush to detail around it. But in the end, I just would soak up the big roller. Let me come show you it. I'd soak it up with just a lot of paint and just really get in there. It took a lot of, a bit of muscle work, but you get in there and you get to do multiple layers. And when it comes to rolling, there's something new that I learned, is that when you use a new roller, there's lots of hairs, it just, it just rolls off and it's a nightmare. Now you can just roll it and just clean it up after your first roll, but I found that if you just, while you're rolling, if you just get rid of any imperfections straight away, just roll it until it's all perfect, then it just, it just makes your life a lot easier rather than have to scrape up all the bumps at the end and just repaint it. But repainting seems to work fine. I've, I've touched up a few areas with uh, this guy in a paintbrush and I can't really notice the difference. I think if you don't leave it too long to dry between the colors, the colors um, will still look good. So it looks gorgeous. What I did find is that if you paint kind of like half a section one day and then another half the other day, you can tell the difference. But as long as you kind of like quadrant it out. So I went around with the cuts of the concrete and it kind of, I can't really tell the difference. There is a couple of areas where I didn't overpaint. For example, here you can still see some of the lines of the concrete. So I can flood it with more paint to hide those marks, but I kind of like them. It gives it a bit of edginess. And I'm sure when I start stepping on it, it looked, it'll look kind of defective. Also, when it comes to rolling, work with the direction of the roller. So for example, if I'm 
going this way, what you do is you turn over the roller and you go with it. So that way there's a bit of pressure pushing the roller back into the actual holder because if you go the other way there, you'll find that the actual roll will roll away. So just work with it. What have you got? Looks like I've got some paint on here. Let me just see if I can hide it. And every single time when I finish painting, I just put the roller back into the bucket of water. And that way it allowed me to, the next day, I can just pick it up and just go, just dry up a little bit and just go rather than the, the roll actually holding up. So that's probably one of the original roll, rollers that I used. Now, finally, regarding the last issue I say is make sure you put a little bit of tape to tell people that there is wet paint because uh, I had a delivery guy just leave beautiful footprints. Like he couldn't figure out from the beginning that it was wet paint. He literally just throughout the whole of the driveway, leaving footprints all the way there. Hey, hi. Okay, just leave it there. I'm just putting it here. So make sure you have a barrier and you're set, but that's it. The job is done. It looks gorgeous. I'm excited to see how long it lasts. I heard it lasts about two years before it starts peeling off. Hopefully it'll be more than that. But yeah, it looks looks good. Looks gorgeous. Next up, we're gonna have to be painting the house. Actually, one more tip, yeah, this is actually very useful, is that this, uh, this paint is very, very sticky and very, very stinky, so make sure you wear a mask. And secondly, unlike no, wa normal water-based paints where you can wash it off with water, yes. this guy doesn't wash off with water, no. you actually have to use- Oil, yeah. olive oil, it yeah. works a treat. Olive oil just gets this stuff off your hands. And it's non-toxic as well. So rather than using like mineral turps or like methylated spirits on your hands, just use some olive oil, it moisturizes and it gets rid of the oil-based paints all in one. All right guys, let us know how your projects are going with your driveway paint. Are you going to do it? Send us some pictures. Show us how it's done. What colour did you go for? Yeah. Hope you guys found this video useful and, and enjoyed. enjoyed the show. <laughs>